to the analytics product. My name is Logan Kate. Many of you have probably either heard me talk on prior webcasts. You may have gone through the Allscripts analytics training with me or worked on me with, uh, with me on other projects. I'm a reporting analyst at Neelan Healthcare. I've been working with the analytics product for several years now. Uh, as, as, again, many of you know, I've done the training for Allscripts also for several years. Uh, so this is a product uh, with which I'm, I'm quite familiar at this point. Today, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing stuff with the meta layer tree and adding custom fields. We'll start out with a quick introduction to the meta layer tree. This is not going to be the meta layer tree that we use when we're building reports. This will be the configuration of the meta layer tree, the build process for it. We'll discuss the types of fields that we have to add, and then I'm going to go through a little bit of creating expressions in SQL. So this is going to be how we trace and copy out the data that's actually being called when we run examples in analytics. And then we'll actually look at this directly in SQL. There's a bit of a syntax change that occurs when we use SQL in analytics within those expression fields. So we'll discuss some of the things that are required in that section. And then we'll get into building actual expression fields, testing these and looking at them with some data in analytics. At that point, we'll then get into building these new fields and adding them to the meta layer tree, a quick conclusion and questions at the end. So before we get started though, there are two things that I want to mention. First, a warning. Whenever we modify the meta layer tree, there's always the op option or opportunity for us to mess something up. And this is not an opportunity we want to take. As such, always be careful with the things that you're modifying and make sure that you're doing just the process that you want. So you're only modifying one field at a time or you're only adding one field to certain sections. Make sure that you put the right name and other settings in uh, because this does have the potential to mess up things for our analytics users. And secondly, the stuff that we're going to look at today requires a little bit more than just analytics access. Um, so I'm, ex I'm expecting a, at least a basic understanding of SQL queries, as we will be looking at those, and access to the SQL database for analytics. We will be using SQL Server Management Studio to build out some of our test queries. So again, it's a little bit more than you would normally have, and that's just something to the request of your IT team or whoever your analytics administrator is. So again, there's a little bit more here than we would normally work with um, in the meta layer tree. Let's actually fire up analytics here and take a look at what we have um, in the meta layer section. Normally, we would hop into a worksheet or a cross tab and work through with the meta layer tree there. However, today, we're going to be doing stuff entirely in the meta layer engine section with a handful of times when we're going to hop in and actually build some, some new worksheets with these fields. So a quick introduction to the stuff that's in here for those of you who may not be familiar with it. There are a couple buttons up here in the toolbar, but the majority of the stuff that we're going to be looking at for now is in here. These are the fields that we have access to in analytics. A lot of this is not particularly useful to us, like field ID. This is just a database table ID. Um, but the field name, description, format, data type, these are things that we will potentially be using with the new fields that we're creating. So field name, if you extend this out, you can see essentially this is going to be a combination of your table name, which you can see over here, um, and the description 
report label and data field, these are often tied together. Uh, technically, this is the table name and data field itself. We have visibility, whether we want to allow searching on this particular field, which we do most of the time. Keywords, not heavily used, but some people do like to add them just so that you can do a keyword search at the top of the meta layer tree in your report build. Table name and data field. Almost everything that we review in here is going to be a table name and data field combination. At some level, analytics is just pulling these straight out of the tables in the analytics database. As such, you can see what these are. So here's a table name of AHS patient IORG and a variety of the data fields that go with that. The other option in here is an expression. This is one of the things that we will be doing today, building expressions. In certain cases, the data in the data field either hasn't had transformations applied in the proper way, or we want the ability to customize the actual, um, the actual transformation that's going on. So we can write out expressions to make changes to one or more data fields from the database. So we will take a look at that. And I'll show you a few of the examples that actually come delivered with your system. And lastly, distinct values. As most of you probably know, this is just a flag that allows you to right click on a data field in the meta layer tree and select distinct values. These are the sort of data pieces and the handful of options that we have around the data fields in the analytics database. Up in the toolbar, we have the save, which will save any changes that we make to these fields. Build meta layer tree. This is what we'll do towards the end of today's webcast, um, but this is going to allow us to put the meta layer tree together based on the fields that we have here. Um, find if you need to find a particular field. Add new meta layer field, again, something that we will see later on today as we build new fields. And then export. Um, if you need to put this into Excel or a text file for some reason, then you can export this data. But in general, I'm not going to worry about that. So that's the meta layer tree, at least as it looks in the configuration side. We're going to be looking at adding new data fields today. Uh, we'll take a look at some examples of existing expression fields, but the data fields that we're going to be doing here are going to be either new, in which case it's just coming out of the existing database, or new as in we're writing a whole new expression for it. So that's the, the default, in this case being a field that exists in a table um, already versus the custom which we will be writing. You've seen some of the field options in here, so that would be things like distinct values, whether it displays as a text or a number or a date. Those allow different settings when it comes to edit properties and how we can filter on some of this. And then so field additions, again, the, we'll see this window a bit later. And then lastly, permissions. There are a variety of permissions under the security settings that allow you to make certain changes to the meta layer tree. However, generally I recommend using the all admin since this will have access to do everything that we need. Sometimes you'll discover that you can create new fields but not add them to the meta layer tree, or at least to the default tree. As such, all admin is what we will be using today. So, types of fields. Obviously, we've seen the standard database fields. By far, the vast majority of the fields in here, and there are many, as you can see as I scroll down through them, are going to be these combinations of tables and columns, uh, basically the table name and data field that you see here. Expression fields, this is what we're going to write, and this, there are a handful of these that already exist. You'll notice most of these say NA in the expression side. 
If I sort by this and scroll up a bit, you'll see maybe a, a, few, a smaller number in your system, but there are already some expression fields in here. Most of these you will probably recognize. So patient age category, that's a big one. Um, and there's the standard patient age and patient phone. These are three that get used, I would say, pretty regularly, uh, especially patient age and patient age category. A lot of people don't realize that these are actually not defined in the database. They're done before this field is showing in the meta layer tree. So once you discover that these are an expression, you can mouse over it or you can click on an individual piece, click this little box on the side, and you can actually see the entire SQL expression that's being used to calculate out um, this field. As such, you'll see you know, this may not necessarily make a lot of sense to you in the way that it's written here, but it's relatively easy to see that essentially this comes out as a value of less than six, which then brings a age zero to five. And again, so less than 18. Basically, if this is true, it's going to show up as zero to five. If this is not true, but this is true, it'll be six to 17 and so forth. A lot of people don't realize that you can change these or you can make your own field based on this and set up your own age categories. There are a lot of reporting measures out there that do look for different age categories. And I've had people complain, well, you know, the age categories that come directly from all scripts are not necessarily that useful. Can we define our own? And the answer is yes, we can. So that's one example in here. Um, we will be building out one like this, so the most recent patient uh, arrived appointment. Here was the case for patient age, uh, which was de-identified. Essentially, once they reached um, 90 or greater, they wanted the age to display as 90. So a relatively simple one based off of what you see in patient age. You know, a little bit of calculation in here was all that was required to set this up. Same goes for in month. Uh, very similar to age, except setting this up for months rather than years. The end goal of this is to be able to provide useful data for newborns, essentially things that were done at six months, 12 months, 15, 18 months. So again, not, not too complicated um, and very useful uh, in certain cases. Um, and then lastly, there are custom database fields. These are fields that I'm not going to go over today. I'll, I'll mention them a couple times briefly. But these are fields that would be added either directly to the analytics database and then brought in or set up as a modification to the ETL to bring fresh data over from the EHR, something that's not included in the ETL at this time. So again, this is a much more complicated topic, um, but the, the I just wanted to mention that that is yet another um, type of field that we have uh, the option to look at. Um, so I have a question here asking about how um, did we get to this screen. This is under the administration tab. So most of the time when we're doing reporting, we'll build things directly in ad hoc in administration, which you may not have access to. It depends on security settings. Um, but the administration is going to allow you to do most of the sort of configuration backend stuff in here. So simply administration, double click, meta layer engine. Uh, and this brings us directly to this screen. Um, so good question and important, important thing to know if you're going to be making these changes. Lastly, around the custom database fields, this is something that Galen can do. We've done it before. Um, there are a variety of different 
field additions that people may be interested in. Sometimes it's a simple combination of patient IDs and certain values. Other times it does include modification to the ETL, but this uh, falls outside of today's webcast. So, creating SQL expressions. PXP trace. Some people may be familiar with this tool. This is essentially a modified version of SQL Server Profiler that captures the exact call that we make to the analytics database when we're running things in analytics. This is going to be very helpful because it's going to show me a couple of things. One, fields that I'm using and the actual name of them, because in, in many cases there are multiple fields that may at certain times share the same exact value and at others not, making it difficult to determine which we want. There may be a variety of fields that are similarly named and we're going to have issues around that. Uh, so knowing the exact field name, very helpful. Same goes for tables. What tables are actually required to display the information that we're pulling and what is the join between those tables? So let's take this, uh, we'll hop into Internet Explorer over here. Um, it, for those of you who are not familiar, Galen Healthcare does have a wiki with a lot of useful information. What we're going to do today is type analytics into the search field. You'll see an all scripts analytics page. And in the resources section, we have PXP trace. This article will go through the steps required to set this up. Typically, this is run on the analytics server. That's what I'm connected to right now. In some examples, though, you can install this locally uh, as long as you have access to this. So this will just go through all of the uh, pieces that are necessary. I'm going to minimize this for now. We'll close out entirely because it does require a separate uh, piece. But I'm going to pull up PXC Trace and the Trace version of Analytics and log in here. So anything that I do in this section is now going to show up in PXC Trace. So we'll open up Analytics and grab some basic patient information. We'll grab some date of birth. Whoops and encounters. So what I'm going to look for is encounters during a certain date range. So I'm going to set this up as just a quick search on, so we want things in January. Because my database is old, I'm going to go for 2010. Probably want to see the actual encounter date time in here and grab where it's performing provider. So we'll do um, performing provider, and then lastly, I want to make sure that my status is arrived. So I'm going to do a quick run on this basic search, uh, basic information in here. But what's really important is that we actually have some data in PXP Trace. Now I'm going to let Fallon open up a poll here for a minute while this is running, so we get some results. Um, but She'll, uh, she'll do that, and we'll get back to the content in a minute. Thank you very much. Thanks, Logan. Um, so for this question, we're just kind of um, interested in who um, we have in the audience today. So um, if you've, whether you've never even seen analytics before or if you're um, pretty advanced in writing your own SQL for analytics, um, just trying to get an idea of uh, who our audience is today. So looks like a lot of you are answering. We have a pretty good mix. It looks like um, we have a lot of uh, beginner um, slash advanced people and then uh, a few very advanced writing their own SQL um, and also a couple uh, newbies to analytics as well. So it um, looks like almost everyone has answered. So I'm going to close this poll and I'll pass it back to you, Logan. Thank you very much, Fallon. All right. So as you see here, we have um, a SQL call or trace here. Um, and so I'm going to copy this and open up SQL Server Management Studio. All right, and I'll 
hopefully that wall can go away because I don't need that. Uh, so I'm going to connect to my analytics server. If you're not aware of this, down in the information bar at the bottom, you will see the name or IP address of the server, the database that you're connected to, and then your worksheet and search uh, name information if, it, if either of them have been saved. So in this case, I'm connecting to AHS Test 11. And I'm going to come into Databases and AHS Relate. And I'm going to click on New Query. Now I can paste this in here. This is going to look a little bit strange. Um, so what I'm going to do is, whoops, there we go. Um, I will split this out into its component pieces so that it makes a little bit more sense, a little bit easier to read. And we'll then split, go through quickly what this, uh, what this all means. All right, so there are three main pieces to this query, the select statement, the from, and the where. If you've done your own SQL before, this will be uh, pretty basic, but what we're looking at is the fields that we included on our worksheet. So patient.fullName, this is the alias. In this case, this is the table name or the table alias. In this case, this is the field name, and then this is the alias that shows up um, if we were to run this. And I'll run this so that it can um, pull up data while we're, while we're looking at it. So table, field name, and the display name. So patient date of birth come out of the same table. And then patient encounters. The from is going to tell me the table that this comes from. So I started with AHS patient because that's what I started with here. Uh, the alias here you'll notice is patient, meaning that we can now refer to this table by typing in the patient piece here. Then we have two joins, two tables that are joined in, uh, AHS V encounter visit, which has been aliased as patient encounters, and it's linked to the patient table on patient.id equals patient encounters dot patient ID. There's also a client ID, which we almost never need to deal with. These are almost always going to be one. But analytics does utilize the client ID join predicate. So if if you want to follow exactly what analytics is doing, feel free to use that client ID section. It should exist in almost all tables. Uh, and then the next one is date dim. This is a way that it breaks up date information. So you can see that this uh, is called patient encounters date time. That's the alias, so much longer. But that's frequently because date dim is utilized multiple times or can be used against multiple uh, tables or fields. And that's joined in on this FK dim date encounter date time and the ID in the dim date table. And lastly, the where. Patient encounters date time, so that date dim table dot month equals one, year equals 2010. That tells us these are basically the search parameters that we input. And then finally, we have patient encounters appointment status name equals arrived. So we're pulling stuff um, out of all three of these tables. This is what we're going to use uh, for what we're pulling out. Common SQL functions that we use when we're writing basic queries in analytics. Top and order by. Top allows you to pull only a certain number of records, whereas order by is a sort. Essentially, when we do a sort, ascending, descending, that's an order by statement. So, one thing that we can do is a top one and an order by. If we order by a certain ID or a date, that top one will be either the first or last, depending on whether we've, which way we've sorted it. So I'm actually going to add in another piece to this where clause. Uh, we're going to look at a, a particular patient in here. Um, so I'm going to do, oops, I need an and, patient.id equals like 
so. Um, and this should return, I think there'll be 13 records that come back for this uh, in, the, in the month of January in 2010. And what we're going to do with this is pull out the most recent information, uh, the most recent encounter, um, a case statement, basically an if-then, potentially with multiple ifs. You can have nested case statements, which you'll see if you look at some of the expressions expression fields that already exist, basically saying if, you know, start an if, and then another one, if, whatever happens, you know, and it goes through a couple of transformations, um, and then it, you'll get back to that main if and say, okay, if that equals something, then go on to the next one. You can have a variety of nested cases in here. Uh, and lastly, max and min. These two, again, will pull the highest and lowest values for a particular field. We'll take a look at some of these, um, both the top and order by, as well as the max min, in terms of pulling the most recent date time. And then we'll look at the case statement when it actually comes to building the expression field. So here are the 13 records for this particular patient. Drag this up a little bit. So there's no sorting on this. Um, in terms of date, at least, at this point. So we're going to take this, we'll just look through because they're relatively easy. So the 7th, 11th, the 28th at 1530, uh, 28th at 1515. So it looks like the, this is the last particular um, encounter within this month for this particular patient. So what I'm going to do is select top one. And then down after the WHERE clause, we're going to do order by, help if we typed order correctly. And essentially, I'm going to grab the same field that we want, so this encounter date time. And I can do this. And then I'm going to put descending, because I want this to start at the top. Oh, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't like this. I don't need the, because uh, that should be alias, and so I can actually just use the alias in here. Um, again, it depends on how you prefer to write your SQL, but this will run. The other thing that we can do, um, and actually let me open this up. I have a query already saved for this. Will be easier, but just copy this out. So I'll paste this down below. And needless to say, so this is run. You'll see uh, 2010, 01, 28, 1530. Now we happen to know simply because we've looked for this particular patient that this is in fact the most recent encounter. So that's a good thing. Here's the max version of this. So this select the highest or maximum encounter date time from, same exact from, same exact where, and we've added that patient ID in here. Uh, so we'll run this again just to make sure that this, in fact, does what we want. So again, these are really the common pieces that you'll see in the expressions that we build, simply because a lot of things that we're going to do are either looking for highest or lowest of something, uh, again, knowing that by using that order by, we can get some interesting data. Um, I'll show you a couple of advanced examples uh, at the end. Uh, and these case statements, basically these if statements that allow us to define a variety of outputs based on some inputs or, or other calculations that are occurring. So, this, this, and this is finished. Now, in this last one, the only thing we included in our select was this encounter date time, meaning that we're only going to see this particular piece of data. So nothing else is going to show up in here. Um, but for now, that's really all we need is to, uh, to pull this up for the particular patient. It confirms what we know, that 1530 time on the 28th is, in fact, the most recent encounter for this patient. All right. Um, now, if we want to add this to our worksheet, 
we can come in and create an expression in here using the expression builder, but we need to know what to paste into this. And there is a difference in the way that these queries look. We're not just going to be able to copy things from SQL Server directly back into analytics. Uh, so direct versus indirect queries. When you think of a, a particular field in here, this is an indirect query because it's part of a larger query which is going to include these fields uh, and the search and the associated tables. So this isn't the entirety of the query that we see here. This is a direct query. It's straight against the database. It includes everything that we want to see. And so I need to figure out what I take out of my existing fields in order to get this field uh, to work in analytics. Now, I'm going to quickly hop into another session here, and I'm, I'm going to grab the existing stuff out of the meta layer engine uh, because I've created this expression before. But I will show you what this looks like. So I'm going to grab this. Um, and for now, let me close out of here again. Um, let me show you down in the window what this looks like and what it will look like when we paste it into here. So essentially what we've done, um, you can see at the very base here that this is, well, it's very similar. Granted, in this case, this includes some other pieces, the 2010 and the 1. Um, but what we're really looking for is select max on this encounter date time from the AHS encounter table. So instead of using the V encounter visit, um, I'm just going directly to the encounter table. Alias is E. Uh, and we've set it to be an appointment and the status of arrived. Again, because most of the time, I'm not interested in the most recent encounter that they had in January of 2010. I really want the most recent encounter they've had in period. Uh, so this is the same basic query as what we see in here, knowing that we don't actually need the patient information, nor do we need the date dim if we're not looking at a particular year and month. Uh, so we've got two other things here, though. We've got a case statement. So this is the case when, then, else, null, end, and this link. And this won't really do much for us in analytic or in SQL, but it is required in analytics. Um, so the case says when patient ID is greater than zero or greater, uh, greater than or equal to zero, meaning this should capture every patient ID. The other option that you could do, uh, so when it's not null, as all of your patient IDs shouldn't be, um, do this, otherwise return a null value. But needless to say, we can leave that in here. If I run this as so, again, greater than zero is fine. Um, I'm actually going to delete this out for the time being. I'm going to click parse because it does need to confirm that the syntax is in fact correct. So this expression passed, we'll say most recent arrived appointment, like so, and hit OK. Now, we'll give this a run, but I want to, whoops, let me click on the wrong thing here. Uh, let me go back and explain what this does. In analytics, and you'll see when the actual values come up, this is telling the query that the patient ID um, out of the encounter table needs to match the patient ID that gets returned in that particular record in analytics. So as we look through some of these examples, you'll see you know there are lots of different patients that show up, and they are going to each have a patient ID. We need this to match exactly what that patient ID is. Otherwise, if we just look for max encounter date time from here where it's appointment and arrived, we are going to get the very last arrived appointment that we had in 
our analytics system. And this is, you know, again, it could be an entirely different patient. Um, see, so this is now fetching data. That's good. And you'll see essentially what happens when we leave this is that for every patient, we will end up seeing the same date and time at the end um, because it's pulling in the most recent arrived encounter that it can find. And hopefully this will display a little bit faster. And then I will run this again as we get into the next section. So this is, as I mentioned before, a slightly modified version, um, but the same basic piece is done in here. We could set this to be 31643. Um, and then I can actually run just the subquery in here. Now, it turns out this patient may actually have something that didn't fall within uh, January of 2010. If they had something later than that, we'll see that. Um, all right. So here's, here's our data back in here. And you'll notice that no matter who the patient is, these are all the same. And that's because this is the most recent arrived appointment, but not necessarily for that particular patient. So what we'll do is just type and e dot patient ID equals, and you can come in here and just double click this in. Uh, so that'll show up. Click parse, tells us that the expression is good. And we'll run this. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, yep, so in, in this case, this patient did in fact have an encounter in February, uh, and we could certainly test this. I mean, we could put a two in here and find, you know, is this the most recent? Sure. Um, and the same goes for up here. The entirety of this, um, actually, you know, let me stop this query and then let's. Oh, I need to comment out this because this is not going to make any sense. Um, to uh, do this and same thing here. Now, when we run this, we should find that we have three of these um, that are set up the same. Let's see, this is still thinking. So, again, there's in this case just something that I've discovered through some of my querying that I can run this directly against the encounter table um, as opposed to using the the encounter visit. There's plenty of stuff that you can do in here against a variety of tables depending on, on what your specific needs are. So this was simpler because I could enter all this information out of a single table. Okay. Analytics is still thinking, SQL is still thinking. All right. Um, but things I do want to, uh, okay, yeah, so direct versus indirect, search versus field. I'm not going to get into search expressions here, but they are generally setting up where a certain field equals or includes various values from some subquery that we would enter. There is information on how to set a patient's encounter to be their most recent encounter. But as the example, as you know, we're doing the most recent encounter here. All right, things to think about around here. These are custom fields. We're building them out, at least for now, it's just a temporary thing. So in, um, in analytics, when this is just in a worksheet, sure, I can save it, but this isn't going to be available to everyone. Whereas what we're eventually going to do is take this and paste it into a new field and put it in the meta layer tree, meaning that it will be available to everyone to use as a field. Uh, so existing expression fields, we took a look at those earlier. This link to patient, that's what we see in analytics where we set that e dot patient ID to be equal to that patient dot ID out of the meta layer tree. I say must link to patient because what we're looking at here is a patient centric field. If you are looking at this based on tasks or results or something else, um, depending on what your specific data was, you might link to a task ID or a result ID instead. Just be aware that what you link to 
um, will make a difference. So sometimes you just want it to be a result that's linked to a particular patient. So it would be R or result dot patient ID equals that patient dot ID. Okay, so this has run the 11th at 1545. So same thing being returned by all three of these queries. Well, in this case, the same date, rather. This one pulls in a little bit more information. But the real important piece is that we are, in fact, um, pulling this up. See the worksheet still fetching. So uh, this case statement, as I mentioned, this is how we're going to utilize and if then to build the actual field uh, to say, all right, patient ID is not null or is, is greater than or equal to zero. Let's go ahead and make and make this field. So hopefully this will should be almost there. And we'll be able to take a look at this and then actually build it as a field. So here's our list of patients, and you'll notice the dates are now significantly different. You'll probably see, yeah, there's a handful of them that do reach out into February because we are looking truly at only the most recent, no matter when that was. Uh, but, you know, so we can see here's a patient who's in here twice, and sure enough, the same data is returned um, for him. Here's another one, shares a name, but different date of birth, different patient. Uh, and of course, this does match these two. It looks like this Alan had one that was a little bit later. So now we've got this query, um, which we can use at this expression. So this we can copy out, and this is exactly what we're going to paste into that new field section. However, before we get there, Fallon is going to launch another poll. Again, so now that we know what your experience with analytics is, I think on this one we're looking for SQL. Am I, am I mistaken, Fallon? Uh, nope, that's exactly what we're looking for. So we just are curious um, if your experience with SQL. We've seen some customers that work uh, specifically within the analytics tool and maybe have um, not as much experience with SQL. So just trying to get an idea of our um, of our audience here with their skill level. So looks like Logan, we're pretty um, evenly spaced between people that don't have experience and then people that are writing stored procedures. So um, probably a lot of good information in this webcast for everybody. Um, I'll leave this open for about another minute um, and I will um, to get some more people to be able to, to answer, but I'll pass it back to you right now. Sounds good. Uh, so thank you uh, for voting on that. And I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised uh, with the, uh, the folks who are running their own stored procedures, um, you know, and who are also doing this on the analytics side. That's not something that I always um, see in, uh, in webcasts about analytics. So good to know that we've, uh, we've got some advanced folks on here. Uh, all right, so we've, we've got our, our syntax here. We know that it works because we ran this and got 35,000 records that didn't error out. Uh, what we're going to do now is actually head back into the meta layer tree to add these fields. So the expression field, again, is going to be very similar to what we've done here, uh, the process that we go through. Actually, going to close this out. I'm going to bother saving. This is where we're going to create the new field. That's the new field button up here, the play and asterisk button. You're probably familiar with this from a variety of other places in analytics. So what I'm going to do here is fill out um, information to make this useful as a field when I add it to analytics. So field name. Um, when we look at this, so field ID will be created when we create this. So I see field name, so I'm going to call this most recent uh, patient appointment dash arrive. Arrived. Um, the report label, I'm not going to worry about at this point. Description, I don't think I really need that field name seems to be pretty good. Down here we have two options, table name and data field or expression. 
I could select something out of table name. You can go through all of the tables that are available. Once you select a table, the data field in that table will be available to you. Um, in the expression, this is where we want to come in. So we can't click in here, but we do have the expression builder icon. And I'm going to paste this in here. So options, I can change this to uh, is not null. Um, and then instead of returning a null value in here, maybe I want to put in um, no arrived point. Then I cannot type today. Um, so we'll do like so. I'll click parse. It tells me that it passes, which is what we would expect. Um, and I'll hit OK. So now we see that there's an expression in here. The data type, this does have an effect on how we can format this field. Because this is returning a date, I'm going to set this to date. In this case, this means that I can go into that edit properties window in a worksheet and add in the hours and seconds. I can make adjustments to the format of that as a date time. If I select it as a text, it's just going to display as the way it comes out of the database and it won't give me those same options. Um, and then the default format, this is essentially the options I have. So uh, maybe I want to go as a long format, two digits each for the day and month, uh, four for the year, hours, minutes, and AM, PM. Once I've selected that, I will simply click Add. So oh, I guess it do need report label, MR, uh, I'll just do MR, AR, most recent arrived appointment, Add. So now it says it added successfully. Would I like to add another? Um, I'm okay right now with just that one, so I'll click no. One or more have been added. Would you like to save any changes you've made to existing fields before it's refreshed? Essentially, this is telling me that if I've made any changes to any of these other fields that exist, uh, do I want to save them? Sure. I haven't actually made any changes, so it doesn't really matter in that case. All right, so now I've created this new field. Um, and I can look at this if we go like so. And up here at the top, so there's that most recent patient appointment arrived. I happen to know that this would be here because it just increments the field ID by one. And here's the expression that we added in here. Once I have this in here, though, I need to get this to the meta layer tree so that my other users have access to it. This is where we're going to go into the build meta layer tree. When you click on this, you'll see over on the left, the meta layer tree essentially as we see it when we're working in a report. Over here on the right, we have all of the fields that don't actually have um, that don't actually have a or haven't been added, shall we say, to the meta layer tree at this point. This is also quite a long list, as you can see by the fact that my scroll bar hasn't moved much. Most of these are things that either don't get used frequently or, for instance, client ID is not going to be useful in a report. Some of these things are actually just used in the ETL process to make sure data is going in and, and being matched properly. So there's a reason that Allscript has left a lot of these fields in here. However, sometimes we will want to add things. But what we really want to do is go down and find that most recent, there it is, most recent patient appointment arrived. So here's where we have this field. Now I'm going to come into my patient section because that's where I want to add this. And then some, sometimes I'll throw things under custom fields. Uh, so you can see there's another version of this and another one there. But maybe I want to put this under encounters, right? Since this is an encounter. So as once I've selected this field, I will right click and select add and then go down to selected fields. And so down in here, you'll see at the bottom this most recent patient appointment arrived. Um, and maybe I want to bring this up a bit to the encounter section like that. 
So now we'll see this right under my encounter date time. So we've spent a fair amount of time here looking at the expression building. What about all these fields that already exist in here? So let's go down to the patient encounter section, see if we can find a useful field that we want to add in patient encounters. Um, so for instance, patient encounters date time, we have month, year, day zero, stuff like that. Um, but maybe I want to have the week available to me or the day of year or day of week. I mean, this could be a useful field. And the same process is done here. Just come up here, right click, select add, selected fields. That disappears out of here, drops down to the bottom of my patient encounters section where I told it to go. And this is what the day of the week. So we'll add that there. Pretty simple. At this point, I'm now going to click the save button. This is going to save the current meta layer tree, which is default. Do that. So this will think for a minute as it goes through to confirm any changes. I will simply exit out of here. And this brings me back to the former page where we were able to create these new fields. I'm going to exit out of here as well. We'll go into ad hoc, analytics worksheets, patient encounters, and as we scroll down here, you'll see most recent patient appointment arrived and day of week. So the two new fields that we just added to the metal air engine are now available to us. So we could do the encounter date time, we could do the arrived one, we could add day of week, which probably includes some um, patient information in here as well. Uh, I've still got my same search, so I can run this um, and just confirm that this data does in fact work. All right. Uh, so again, table and column, that's if it already exists in the database. You always have the option to go in and look to see whether it's there. There are, you know, obviously somebody at Allscripts probably years ago sat down with a list of those data fields and decided what to put into the metal layer tree. They may not have gotten everything that you want to see. And so check to see whether the field that you're looking for is already here. It may take a bit of scrolling. There are a lot of fields in this database, but do uh, take a look at that. Uh, the new fields in the database I discussed, again, as being a little bit more advanced um, than what we want. So uh, building the tree, we've done that. Again, meta layer permissions. Frequently, we'll want to set this up as something under all admin because there are a variety of permissions related to what you can do in the meta layer engine section under security. So if you have access to that all admin, again, don't want to, we don't want to use it too much, but in this case, it's by far the easiest way to accomplish uh, what we've done today. So, conclusion, we looked at creating a custom field. There were a couple steps to it. The first, we took PXP trace and built out a search that looked for data that's similar to what we want. Essentially, it gave us that information on the fields that we wanted, the tables that they came from, the join predicates on tables if we had more than one. And in this case, I mean, the where clause is useful for some of this. Obviously, we made some modifications to the way that we actually created this field, but it gave us the start point for the, the tables that are used in there and how they link up. And then we built out this based on what we thought this would look like syntax-wise. Obviously, there are some modifications that are required, but the case statement that I posted, and I will post the expressions that we went through today, if you just set case, you know, patient ID is not null, and then put your subquery in after that, that will pretty much set you up for any of your custom fields that you build. And then we get into um, the modifying, well, the existing fields relatively simple um, to add, but we were able to either create them from a new table and column combination or as that expression. We then added these to the meta layer tree 
it's a relatively simple thing when you have the correct permissions. If you don't, those options will be grayed out and you will have to either get those permissions added to your account or use an account that does have them. But it really comes down to, we want to improve the analytics experience for our users. And so sometimes that means uh, doing something like this, you know, setting up a, a most recent expression or some other patient age category, you know, and there are a variety of other things that you could add in here. This can be very handy, right? Certain things that you find yourself using frequently, if they're not available, well, do you think we can do this in SQL? Can we take this information and apply it to what we've already seen? Um, you know, can we do this with a couple of functions uh, and some order by stuff? Sure, you know, and in a lot of cases, these will be, you know, the most recent counters. You know, this patient had one a week later. But we have this option uh, to build these out and make this easier so that someone who doesn't understand SQL, who doesn't think that we can get that most recent encounter, well, now we can provide that to them. Performance considerations. While this is wonderful and we can say, hey, yeah, I can do all this stuff, every single record that this is going through, in this case, you know, 30, almost 35,000 of them, it's finding out this most recent patient appointment. So when we run this without this, this search will take two seconds. Running it here takes a minute or more. So always be aware that anything that we do expression-wise, it as long as, and, and perhaps there are indexes to help deal with this, uh, certainly on some of the pre-built expressions there are, this may slow down reports significantly. So always be aware of that, do your testing. Again, it's not too hard. You can do the testing without adding the field just by setting it up as a temporary custom field. But be aware that running subqueries like this for all of our records can be significantly slower. Um, and then advanced SQL expressions. Let me close uh, out of this or open up another uh, report that has some uh, more advanced expressions. That. These are, it's, this report, first of all, from a performance standpoint, takes, I think, half an hour to run or so. And granted, the, the search that goes with it is somewhat advanced, but a lot of it comes down to the fact that we're calculating out many different fields. So most recent A1C date and value, second most recent A1C date. <clears throat> Hang on, let me just exit out of analytics for a minute. It doesn't, for whatever reason, it doesn't like showing me those until I restart it. However, now we'll do this. And so if we look at second most recent, I can view this expression. Here's an interesting combination. We have a select top one from, and then a select top two as our first, as our, as our subquery. Essentially what we're doing is pulling in um, numeric results um, and date time from the result table. Uh, there's two different joins on here. So you can see I've copied this one straight out um, where we're looking at these certain A1C values. Uh, again, we've got that patient ID match so that that's going to show up. Then we've ordered this by the date time. Now this is descending and this subquery is now known as T and out of this we're taking the numeric result and sort um, ordering it the other way, we're going ascending and selecting the top one. So essentially we're getting the two most recent and then the least out of those two just by ordering it in the other direction. So there are options, in this case, um, slow options, but there are options for getting advanced data like we're seeing here. So you actually can pull the second most recent values. Um, it's not done as, as we might think through multi-search, but it is possible. However, it's very, very slow. So, any questions?
let me uh, pause this and see if we can pull up the question section because I know there are some here. Um, Q and A. Well, Logan, questions. while you're yeah. going through that, we also had one other poll question. This is sort of an oh, open-ended. Right. Um, if you are, um, and you can let me know if you're having issues with this, but um, we're just kind of interested in um, any other analytics topics that you might be interested in um, in learning about. Yeah, I, obviously to me, it, it feels a little bit weird to go over the things that I do during the standard analytics training, and I actually recognize a fair number of names from this um, from this session that I've seen in training. So I'm, I'm always curious as to whether there are certain topics, certain advanced topics that either you want to go through in, in greater detail or something like this, um, which perhaps you didn't know about. Um, you know, we do have these options. So there's if there's advanced stuff that you're curious about, I would love to know um, what uh, what you're what you're looking for. So yeah, Fallon, just let me know when the the poll is done. We'll look through the Q and A stuff. So I'm going to start looking through uh, some of these questions. So uh, first one is, will this be recorded? Um, and the answer is yes. Uh, I know it's, when I went through the dry run for this, I discovered that I was basically ran right up against the hour on this. And while we do schedule time for questions, I know a lot of people um, tend to, to hop out after the hour. So yes, we do record this. Um, you can reach out to us and we'll send the recording to you. So uh, the slides I will post, and I'll, I'll post a, at the bottom here, I'll, I'll add some stuff um, with the expressions that we look at and a couple others that, that may interest you. But uh, those will be on the public wiki, so wiki.galenhealthcare.com. Um, but if you're actually interested in the recording, you can reach out at sales at galenhealthcare.com, um, and they will make sure that you get that. So other questions that I see. Will it be possible to change the joins between tables if required? Yes, you can certainly make changes to it. My recommendation would be to run this in SQL first. So um, let's, let me hop back here for a minute. And for instance, if you wanted to take, let's say this query, uh, there's plenty of information out on the web about joins, but you don't have to go the way that they do. If you wanted to say inner join on the, the encounter visit, you certainly could. I would take a look to make sure that you're not adjusting any of this stuff. I mean, you could also look and say, well, there should always be a patient ID in here and the client ID. We don't need to worry about too much. So this, an inner join here should return the same number of records. Run it on a couple different queries, test different years, different months, things like that, just to make sure. But yeah, you can absolutely change the joins um, that are used in here. Um, what is the meaning of SK DIM date? So in here, so in the patient encounters, or technically in this, alias is patient encounters, um, there's this field called SK DIM date and encounter date time. You'll often run into SK underscore DIM date underscore something in a variety of these tables. The, the SK stands for foreign key. Um, which I'm not going to get into. It, it relates to how tables are linked in the database. But DIM date is generally used to minimize the data that's stored, in this case, in the, the encounter visit table. Um, and so you have a number, essentially, in there. And this, this field um, will, in the 
patient encounters table will have a number that ties to an identifier in the date dim table. And then the date dim will break this information down so that you can, we can pull in the year and the month as opposed to doing a date part on this. So it'll have an ID that ties to a very a specific time. So the date dim table has tons of records in it for basically every time date combination that you have in the EHR. Um, and so this is going to link to that date dim table on a very specific value that will return any of those pieces of information about this, about that date. What does the E specify in the expression? So this was down here in so this is the e dot encounter date time. When you see a from or a join on a table name and then something after it, this is the alias, which essentially allows me to write out e up here instead of doing ahs encounter, so the table name dot field name, I can just use the alias. So it's, it's honestly just a way of making this much shorter, but I find it so much easier to read. So that's the way that I tend to write these things. But you can just look up SQL uh, table alias. Uh, there's all sorts of good free information on the net about ways to make your queries look cleaner and, uh, and smoother. Um, what table in AHS Relate has the diagnosis field linked to an order? Off the top of my head, I don't know. Uh, I would have to do some querying in here. But to be honest, the way that I would look at it is run PXP trace, pull up a report that has diagnosis fields linked to your orders, and see what tables are included and what the joins are. Uh, will, uh, will the else part of the expression impact the date part? Uh, so this would be, let's see where we're, um, let me close out of here. Pull up MetaLayer engine. I'll show you what this looks like. Uh, okay, we'll get one of these. So, in this case, what are we looking at? So basically, this says if patient ID is equal or greater than or equal to zero, then pull this encounter date time. Otherwise, put in a null value. Um, so this will not affect the date part unless you have a patient ID that's null. However, due to the syntax requirements of analytics, we can't just say the select max portion in here. So generally I'll just do case when, you know, because all patients should have an ID, and then I'll usually just deposit a null in there. So it's, it's just the syntax part and will not affect um, the date portion. Um, we were told by all scripts that if we add a field to the default meta layer tree, it will be removed with each update. The way around that is to put it into the custom field group. Is that not accurate anymore? I would go with what all scripts says because they're the ones who perform most of the upgrades. Um, I, I don't know for sure because they don't do any upgrades in our system. Um, unfortunately, we have to do those, which is partly why I'm on a, a version that's a couple versions out of date. Um, but I, if, if they say that the custom field section will keep that, then that's where I would drop it. Otherwise, you'll go through this process again. Um, be interested to hear what fields or expressions others have set up as part of their tree. Absolutely. This, this is something that I would probably expect to see on Client Connect. I imagine that, I, I know that there's a decent amount of stuff about SQL expressions already. Uh, I've posted stuff over the years about it. But absolutely, if, if anyone out there has SQL expressions that they use either for searches or as fields, um, I would suggest starting something on Client Connect um, or finding one of the current expression um, discussions going on there and paste that. The one thing I would mention is if you're using it as a search expression to make sure that you mention that, a lot of people who are just getting into utilizing SQL in analytics will often find that they'll try to add it one way when it, it doesn't actually come through that way. Um, 
Will there be future webcasts covering more advanced topics like modifying the ETL to include fields that are not there in the AHS Relate database? I'm not sure that I can cram this into an hour. Um, you know, this is a relatively advanced thing to do. There are, there's a bunch of stuff that's required even before you get to the point of adding fields to analytics. Um, so this may be something best addressed in a custom session. Um, if you have, you know, if, if there are things, one, I would check with all scripts to see if it's coming in a future release. Um, and then two, feel, certainly feel free to give me a call or email me. You can always um, send stuff to sales at, at galenhealthcare.com and check on whether and just ask and say, hey, you know, we're interested in adding, you know, X, Y, and Z fields, and I can figure out whether this is something um, that's best done in a in a one-on-one -on -one session. But again, it's it can be a very advanced process depending on how you want to go about it. So uh, most likely a bit beyond what we've put in a, in a one-hour webcast. Um, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I see a couple other questions that relate to the ETL. So one, this is how can we modify it to pull more fields? Again, um, I'd say what I just went over, but always be aware that stuff may exist in the database that you don't see. So maybe you've been through and queried the tables, uh, the applicable tables, maybe not, but definitely take a look in that metal layer engine section and see whether the field that you're looking for is there. Obviously, you can hop into SQL Server Management Studio and see whether it's populated with data, whether it's actually the data that you want, but there's a lot of stuff in there already that you don't see in the metal layer tree, so definitely check that before, um, before you uh, try to modify it um, to bring in something that's already there. So that's what I see in terms of questions. I don't think there's anything else. So thank you very much for attending, um, and, uh, and have a great day.